Hi there. Today I would like to tell you a little about Al Aira embroidery and in what sense it differs from embroidery by hand. It is still considered hand embroidery because um, everything is manipulated by hand. Nothing is automated in this type of embroidery, although you use a machine. The first thing is that what we consider embroidery is embellishment with threads, with needle and thread. And normally we would have an embroidery needle and a thread and we would go through the fabric by hand to make something beautiful. Then we have the machine-powered embroidery, which is like the automated machines that do the uh, promotional embroideries or the machines that do more creative work with, but still powered by the machine and um, most of the time uh, you give the pattern in the computer and it comes out automatically. With Al Aire it's different. You work on a fabric but you don't put the thread, your embroidery thread in the machine. You take your thread and you place it on the fabric and then you stitch over it with the machine. And the stitching is done with an invisible thread. So you don't see the stitches of, of the actual, um, of the stitches that put it down. So what you do is you have the machine, you have to transform the machine in some ways to make this happen. And then you have no pressure foot on the machine working anymore. So what you need is an embroidery hoop to get tension on the fabric that you work on. So you need a hoop, the tension, and then you put it under the machine. And instead of choosing a colored yarn and embroidering with that yarn, you have invisible yarn and you place your material uh, I specifically say material because it's not only thread that we use you place your material on the fabric and you stitch over it and then it will show and what you do is like you stitch over it and then you can place it in different directions and stitch over it so you can make all kinds of patterns and flowy um, figures um, in many ways and you can combine materials it really becomes an interesting story so what materials can be used actually anything that is um, that can be easily stitched on so not very thick sturdy materials but anything which is ribbon and uh, uh, cords small cords and um, metallic yarns and soutache really all kinds of thicknesses and expressions so you can create an interesting look me personally, I like to use uh, three or five different materials in the same color range to give it a ton sur ton look. And of course, I love to add some shine, uh, especially some gold or silver, because uh, that radiates from afar and uh, makes it very fast. If you want to test the material, if it suits the project, if it suits the technique, what you do is you just put it on your fabric and you slowly start stitching over it to see if the needle easily goes through it. If the needle easily goes through it, it's fine. If it has a hard time, I would not recommend to use it. Mm, so I will show you closely how materials can look like like this is really nice why because it's very shiny it's viscose and it's a beautiful 
flat ribbon. Then, of course, we have the soutache, shiny as well, and very strong in expression. Then I have this yarn. It is used for crochet or knitting. And I love the, the different shades in one color. And you have lovely threads that really work well with this technique. Then I have this thread. This is very thin. You might think, oh, this is too thin to work with. But you can always um, uh, fold it and use two or three strands together to create more fullness in the thread. And last but not least, I would like to show you this ribbon is really beautiful as well. Um, very soft and shiny. And actually the shine, I think that's the most important in choosing the right materials. The more shine, the better. If you are interested in more videos on Al Aire, please comment below. Then I know I, this is of interest to you and I will create some more content on YouTube for you.